Do you have a story to share with the world? Of course you do. We all have stories to share. An Anchor podcast allows you to share your interests in a way that connects to others all across the globe. If you have been considering starting your own podcast and don't know where to begin, Anchor makes it easy to record, edit, and publish with the click of a button. You can even add music. Whether it's crime dramas, self-improvement, paranormal adventures, or tips about parenting, you too can share your unique imprint on the world. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. You've got this. I believe in you. Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya, and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tools and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. It's no secret that there's a lot of things happening in the world today, okay? So we can see it on the news, we can see it through our television programs, we can actually see it when we're out and about, just shopping. Uh, You can feel the energy, you can feel that there's a shift happening and it can be really scary at times. It can be very scary if you allow the fear to take over. But if you have a better understanding of what's going on in this awakening process, this is actually a beautiful time to be here because a lot of people are beginning to see through some of these illusions that we have been subject to for a really, really long time. So when I first started going through my awakening, it was probably back in 2010. And the first sign that I knew I was going through a spiritual awakening is I began to clean up my diet and I began to research fluoride and detoxing and all of these things to kind of clean my system. It was something that I was being guided to and it kind of became an obsession a little bit. Like I just couldn't get enough. I started to really research different types of foods and the nutrients that were in them. And I really just wanted to have a much more clean diet. That doesn't mean that I started to cut out uh, meats and stuff. Now, some of you may have, but that's where I was in that process. And now I've gotten to a point where I'm, you know, probably 90. 5% uh, vegetarian, and I'll incorporate a little bit of meat in there too. But when I started to research the fluoride, it was uh, more of a process of trying to open up my pineal gland and have a better understanding of what that meant and why was uh, the government putting fluoride into our water and why is this considered a neurotoxin? I just began to question and I wanted to find answers to some of these questions. So that was kind of my very first uh, sign that I began to awaken to what was going on uh, in the world around me. The second sign for me was I began to have no tolerance for what was being dished out at me from the mainstream media. So I came from a trauma background and I naturally started to turn off the news because when I would wake up in the morning, I would see what was going on, uh, what was actually going on in the local news was what was happening at the hospital. So I began to just kind of shut those things out of my life. I, I turned it off on my news feed, on my phone. I started to adjust a lot of my social media so I wasn't seeing a lot of that stress, stress, stress coming at me. But I began to kind of see through the BS. I'm an advertising major and I took several classes on subliminal messaging and uh, I had learned that a lot of things are being played or pushed in the background that are coming at you from a subconscious level that your conscious mind doesn't even realize. So when they crank up the noise or they have breaking news or they do these things, they're actually doing some subconscious subliminal messages behind the scenes. So I just didn't want anything to do with that. So I could kind of start to see through that BS and maybe some of you have already started to see that too. That part of that illusion is to distract us from what's really going on behind the scenes at a deeper level. So once you get to that point of seeing through the BS, seeing through the illusion, You can't even stomach it anymore. You just don't want anything to do with it. So you start to find other ways to to make up your time. Maybe dabbling a little bit more in some documentary films or um, 
finding different uh, different programs that you really start to enjoy more than consuming yourself with all of this uh, mainstream media. So the, th the third thing that I started to notice when I started to go through this awakening process is that I could see through people who were not being authentic or genuine. And I think that this can kind of allude to the fact that I'm an empath and through this whole process, I learned what an empath was. And if you wanna learn more, you can um, uh, check out my other video on what is an empath so that you have an understanding of that. But I could not stomach people who were not being authentic. And I started to lose friends from this because I was beginning to wake up to this stuff and I was seeing through things a lot faster and a lot easier. And it was making it really difficult for me because I was trying to lead a life of being my most authentic and genuine self. And it was hard for me to be around people who weren't doing that, who were trying to uh, put on a, a mask or an image for others because they were fearful of what others may think of them or it was just something that, um, you know, maybe they had been ingrained in them since they were young. And that was something that was really uh, very predominant for me when I began to go through my awakening process. The you may also start to notice that you want to spend more time in nature and around those who um, who you love more because nature is its own natural energy and when you have that natural energy there you naturally want to gravitate towards it and it's something that is really freeing for you especially if you've been um, kind of roped down or chained down by the mainstream media or the social media or politics or all of those things you just want to bust out of that and spending time in nature can really reset that energetic system for you the the uh, next thing that I started to realize when I began to go through this awakening process is I went through what I call the hermit stage and the hermit stage is you're so overwhelmed by all of the things once you start going down that rabbit hole and you start to research you are seeking the truth because you begin to wake up to the illusion that we have been lied to we have been deceived all of our lives through the television programming and they call it a program for a reason because it's there to program our subconscious mind um, through our education system, we've all been taught the same standard uh, ways of history and, and geography and all of these things. And as you begin to dive deep into that rabbit hole of seeking truth, you begin to deer in headlights. You're like, what is happening? And it becomes really overwhelming. So you want to kind of hermit away from people because you just you're confused. You don't know who to trust. You don't know what to do. And especially for some of you who start to go down the conspiracy theory route, which I did, and I think it's important to go down that path when you're going through the awakening process because it's a part of the learning process, but just don't get caught up in it. For me, I started to really go down that path of um, sex trafficking and satanic rituals and all of this stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is really happening in the in the world. And I noticed my energy started to, de to deplete and my vibration started to lower. So I knew in those situations when I started to go down that rabbit hole too much, I had to pull myself out and go do some grounding and some self-care and some things that would actually help bring me back up to a point of um, feeling feeling more positive and, and better because once you start to go down that hole, it can get really, really dark. Um, you may also want to start researching more things about universal law, the cosmos, um, spirituality, extraterrestrial life, like all of these things, you know, that we have been completely uh, blindfolded from, I guess is a good term to use, our whole life, you want to know the truth. You want to start seeking the answers. And part of that hermit stage is you begin to feel very lonely and that you don't relate with other people. And many times you feel crazy. You feel absolutely crazy. You're like, what the hell am I looking at? 
Arcturians and Pleiadians and I'm watching Billy Meyer and, and following Dolores Cannon and you know you're just doing all of these wild things and you're like this is like a totally different reality but it's all a part of that awakening process and as you go through it you'll begin to realize that you're not the only one going through that process and uh, as a as a you know as the world begins to awaken to all these things there's going to be more people out there and they're going to want to know you know some of these answers and they're going to want to know why are they going through this and and is this something that they're only going through and it's important to understand that it's not just something that you're going through everyone's going through it the the collective consciousness because we all are connected to a certain extent we are all going through it. So these questions are coming to the surface. And the only way to bring the darkness to the surface is to shine light on it. And unfortunately, it's going to get a little rocky once um, we start shining more light on what's been going on in our government structures and in Hollywood and all of these things because they have been hiding it for so long in the dark. And the more that we bring light to it, the more that it will um, be really hard for some of us. Some of us are going to be like the crying game in the fetal position, like I was when I started going through this process. It was like, what the hell is going on in the world? But it's just, you got to take it in little doses. Don't, you know, completely overwhelm yourself. Like me, I'd spend like every night I get home from work and just be diving into this stuff. And um, for me, it was kind of feeding that, um, that, passion a little bit, but it was still very overwhelming. So uh, the fifth thing that you may start to notice is that you have an intolerance for people hurting the environment, hurting other people, hurting animals, and you're being really strongly nudged to do something about it. Uh, for me, I was working in a trauma setting in the field of organ donation, and I had been in that setting for mm, almost 15 to 20 years. And I was being strongly nudged to help people. I had seen what was going on in the healthcare industry. And I would see these people coming into the hospital and they would not get better. They weren't leaving. Um, and they were just being flooded with uh, pharmaceutical drugs. And I knew in my soul there was something more that could help people heal. So I was being strongly nudged to learn different modalities that would help other people heal their bodies naturally and intuitively because I was doing it. I was healing my body naturally and intuitively. So if I could do it, I could teach other people how to do it. And that's part of that, what we call the matrix programming is that we have been taught ever since the moment we were conceived that the only way that we can heal um, is through, you know, Western medicine, and especially here in, in the States, I, I can't really speak for, for other countries, but in the States, that's really what we've been, we've been taught. And uh, I grew up in a very small rural, t rural town around a lot of Amish folks, and, you know, they were healing themselves, and they were doing a lot of different natural remedies and modalities, and I think I was naturally drawn to that. So I never went down that path of Western medicine, but working in that field, I was seeing it incessantly and it was just making me start to question, is there something more to this? So I was being strongly nudged. It was like I had to see that in order for me to propel myself in a different way to start my own business and to really get out there and help people on a much a deeper level to get to the root cause of their problems versus just putting a band-aid on it, which is what a lot of those medications do. So the, um, the next thing that uh, I started to notice when I began to go through my awakening is what's called synchronicities. And I did a video on synchronicities, so check that out. Uh, but when I first started seeing synchronicities, I was seeing it in numbers. And you can see it in a whole variety of ways. You can see it through letters, numbers, animals, shapes, um, people coming into your life at really weird times, and or you're just thinking about them and they kind of just pop up there, or you're thinking about starting something and that that person just pops up in your 
in your reality and is like, hey, I have this opportunity. And you're like, whoa, I was just thinking about that last night. That's a synchronicity. So for me, I was seeing the number 911 all the time. When I was working in trauma, I was like, why am I seeing 911 all the time? So it forced me to kind of research what the heck does 911 mean? And it took me to these angel numbers and um, but it's really much on a much deeper scale is that you're being communicated with from your higher self, from God, from source, from the universe, whatever you want to call it, you're being communicated and guided um, to start doing certain things in your life that puts you more on the path of your soul. And in my particular um, situation, I was, was on my path in the beginning, but I began to get really restless and was feeling unfulfilled. And I knew there was something deeper in my soul that I needed to do on a more, um, you know, global standpoint that I wanted to help people on a much deeper level. So the 9-11 was me, was telling me slow down, slow down because you're not, you're on autopilot. Every day I was getting up and doing the same thing and not really thinking about it. I was just on autopilot all the time. And 9-11 was kind of telling me to slow down, find some inner peace, relax, and listen to your intuition more. Well, as I started to do that, I started to see 11, 11 all the time. And I'm like, what is this? Like, it got very ridiculous. Like, I'd be, you know, I'd look at the clock and it would say 11, 11. And then I, you know, look at um, the television. It would see, say 11, 11. I look at my phone. It would say 11, 11. And I'm like, what is 11, 11? Well, that started me to research a little bit more that 11, 11 is the code for spiritual awakening. It's a good sign to know that you're beginning to awaken. So if you see 1111 everywhere, just know that you're waking up from the matrix. You're waking up from the illusion that has been programmed into our mind. And then after 1111, I think I saw 22 all the time, which basically means you're guided and supported. And then once I started to make some pretty significant changes in my life, I quit my job. I moved across the country from Florida to Washington. I started my own business. I was seeing 44 like nobody's business. It was everywhere. And 44 is the sign of the light worker, someone who is a beacon of light, someone who carries the light. And as I began to see these numbers, it was just, I would laugh because it was just ridiculous. Like, I'd see five license plates in front of me at the stop sign or at the stoplight and they all have a 44 on it. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? But as I began to see these numbers, I started to follow them. And as I began to follow them, my life just started to become much more easier with the way that it was flowing. People were coming into my life that were helping me create things that I wanted to create on a much more uh, broader scale. And it was guiding me to where I needed to be, where I needed to live in order to, you know, jump my old timeline to my new timeline and get to a point where my reality had completely shifted so much that I no longer was living that stressful trauma lifestyle. And now I was living a much more holistic, a much more relaxing and a much more um, in flow lifestyle. So if you're beginning to see some of these signs, and you may not see all of these, you may see some of these, um, just know that you're going through the awakening process and we're all gonna be going through this at some point. So you may be watching this and think, this girl's freaking nuts. What is she talking about? Numbers and ETs and you know whatever. But the reality is, is you may not resonate right now and some of you may, but there's going to come a time where you will probably resonate. You'll probably want to come back to this video because you'll be like, oh, I got to go check this out again because we all go through that process and we're all going through it together and we're all going through it at different stages. And it's, it's all a part of getting us on our path to where we need to be. We are all here for a certain purpose. We all have a certain mission and some of us don't even know what the heck it is. I mean, honestly, sometimes I don't even know what the heck mine is either, but I follow my internal guidance. I follow my, you know, my inner intuition and my knowledge. And every day it just opens up new avenues and new opportunities for me that I never would have experienced had I not um, started to go through this process. So if 
you're feeling alone, just know that you're not. If you're feeling crazy, just know that you're not. Um, this is all a part of that process. And as we begin to awaken, you're going to start seeing groups of people coming together, people coming together to help lead other people through this process. Because some of us are the front runners, the first responders. And I don't know how the heck I signed up for this, but I did. And it's a little wild and crazy. But the thing is, is that um, maybe that was part of why I was led to trauma and I had a better um, understanding, a better knowledge of being a first responder and being a first responder in a totally different way, I guess. So um, sometimes you think, why, why did I sign up for this? What happened? You know, but we're all here and we need to look at it as this is an empowering moment. This is a chance for us to shift and change the world because we all know it's in the shit can right now. I mean, the world is in the shit can and we need to get it out of, of the shit can. So if there's one thing that each and every one of us can do, it's just to smile and be kind to others while you're going about your day. Be a good person and try to do things that are in alignment with your soul because when you're in alignment with your soul you are just naturally flowing with your path and with the universal flow of energy so hang in there guys if you're going through this and you can relate then share some comments below just know that you're not alone you deserve to navigate your life as an empath in alignment with health happiness and abundance to learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping and the Emotion Code, visit my website at www.thesoulcafe.org.